Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for the leadership meeting we have tonight. Thank you for what you are revealing to us as we come every Tuesday here. Thank you for the way you are preparing us so we'll be more effective in this work and ministry you have given unto us. We are praying, O oh Lord, that tonight again you speak to every heart in Jesus' name. And we pray that we'll not just be hearers of the word only, we'll be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see and to behold wondrous things out of your word. And help us, Lord, that you'll make us able ministers of the New Testament, so that what we learn will make us more effective in the ministry of the New Testament church, which you have given us to do in our areas of work. Be with us by your spirit. Reveal your truth to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. I read those two verses of scripture, just for you to understand about Joshua. You know the name you know the book. What most people do not realize is that the mention of the name of Joshua in chapter 1 verse 1 is not the first mention of Joshua in the Bible. Many people as you open the book of Joshua and you come across Joshua and then you see that he's thrust into service. You may think you are coming across him for the first time. No. Many years of training, many years of preparation had preceded his calling to the great responsibility of leadership. And that's what we're looking at today. We're going to go some books behind Joshua. And we're going to look at almost all the references that has the name of Joshua before you actually come to the book of Joshua. I'm talking to you on the training and the preparation of a leader. The training and the preparation of a leader. And we're going to look at the life of Joshua to see how that training comes about and how it can be effective and effected in our lives. The first mention of his name is in Exodus chapter 17. Even in that account, you will see that he had had some preparation, some recognition before the event that we'll be reading about there. And he had proved himself to be trustworthy and dependable from the time of passing through the Red Sea by the children of Israel until Israel entered into the promised land. And if we hope to do any tangible work, any lasting work, any notable work for Christ, we must allow the Lord to train us and to prepare us in his own appointed way. Before we go to that exodus, please look at Numbers chapter 13 and look at verse 16. Numbers chapter 13 verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. That is when twelve spies were chosen. And it was saying to the land of Canaan that they will spy out the land. Joshua happened to be one of them. And then in the latter part of that verse, Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. Something is very significant there. God was going to use him for something great. 
and then his name had to be changed. You will find as you look through the Bible that people that God wanted to do something with, for example, Abraham to Abraham, he was to be used so that he will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. In the case of Oshia, that word Oshia, the name means salvation, just salvation. But Jehoshua means he by whom Jehovah will save. First of all, salvation, just for yourself, just an individual. But when the Lord wants to use you to bring that salvation to the multitudes of other people, then your name is changed. It's not the outward thing today that externally our name is changed, but our nature has to be changed. He by whom God will do great exploits must have his nature changed. And if you really passionately desire to do great things for God and for the people of God, you must earnestly and fervently pray that there will be a change of nature. A change that is so deep. A change that is so far-reaching. A change that will be permanent, as permanent as the name of Joshua became. A name that will be appropriate in nature, a change of nature that will be appropriate for the ministry ahead of you. And a name in nature that is broad in scope as the ministry the Lord is preparing you for. Having said all that, we now need to look at the life of Joshua and see the things, the lesson we learn about his training and preparation. There are three points we are going to examine. Number one, consecration and submission during training. Consecration and submission during training. Number two, companionship and spiritual and spirituality of the trainee. Companionship and spirituality of the trainee. Number three is the commission and the charge. Commission and the charge of the trained. Number one, the consecration and the submission during training. We come to Exodus chapter 17. The very first mention of that name, Joshua, in the Bible. We're looking at, Joshua, at Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand in the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. Now please understand, there is a lot you find in these passages we are going to be examining tonight. But we're not going to concern ourselves very much with many other lessons and many other things we could have said on the passages. We're only going to be looking at the things that relate with the life of Joshua. These are children of Israel that come out of the land of Egypt. And now they were just coming out. You know the story in chapter 14. They had passed through the Red Sea. And as they came out in chapter 16, chapter 15, they sang to the Lord. Chapter 16, you'll find manna came down. And then in now chapter 17, the Amalekites came to fight against the children of Israel. And then Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men and go out and fight with Amalek. The first lesson we learn. He was eventually to fight many battles in the land of Canaan. And the very first mention of him talks about fighting against Amalek. Isn't there a lesson there for us who are now being trained for a greater ministry, for a wider ministry? Our eventual final ministry is earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. That will be our lifetime ministry. Well, if fighting the good fight of faith, if earnestly contending for the faith, will be the eventual final scene, that means then, from the very beginning of our training, we then must be fighting the good fight of faith. And if you are going to fight and win, this is the time to demonstrate that as to fight against the devil. 
as a fight against the flesh, as a fight against the world. And the way you do it now, and the result of it now, as you fight the local battle in your own private life, will show us how you are going to do when it comes to fighting the battle of the Lord. That's another thing we learn. Here Moses called Joshua, and he said, choose out men. Very clearly then, Moses had known Joshua before this time. He had won for himself that he could be a captain over others. Choose out men. We learn a lesson there. Joshua, you are going to have a ministry when you get to Canaan. Because you are going to lead the people of God to the promised land. You will not do the work alone. You are going to learn how to work with a team. Isn't that a lesson we are learning? That if we are going to work in the kingdom of God, our training will make us to know how to relate with people. How to interact with people. How to be able to work among men. And then we find uh, something here that uh, in verse, uh, verse uh, 10, it says, So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him. Here we do not find uh, Joshua complaining, or Joshua saying, that will be my first time, or Joshua saying, can't you change the assignment a little bit? He knew something, that he was receiving this assignment from God through Moses. And therefore, we see his consecration. If somebody is going to be a, Mario, a mighty warrior, eventually, at the beginning now, he will be a mighty worker. From worker to warrior. And the person that the Lord is preparing to be an apostle eventually will be a committed disciple today. That's something we're learning. In the little, little assignments of life that we receive today, you accept them. And you receive them. And you give it everything you've got so that you can demonstrate that when a greater assignment come, comes, by the grace of God, you will not fail the Lord. We learn another thing. There is prompt obedience here. He obeyed promptly. And then we learn another thing here. There is courage. And there is willingness to sacrifice. Of course, you can see here the submission. Let's go on in that verse 10. It says, and it came to pass, when Moses had held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. What a lesson we're learning. You know, as we are being trained for the work of the Lord, what happens now will show what will happen tomorrow. What happens at the beginning of ministry will show what will happen when you are matured, more matured in ministry. Do you see here that he was dependent upon God and dependent upon his human leader, Moses? Although he had been found trustworthy, although he had been found loyal, although he had been found that he was a capable leader over men, and yet he could not do the work alone. You remember when he came to the land of Canaan eventually, and he was to fight the battle. Well, he just looked up and he saw somebody. And he came to him and said, are you for us or you are against us? And he said, don't you remember, I'm paraphrasing now, interpreting now. When you started the ministry, you are to depend upon the, uh, on the supplication and the prayer, the intercession of Moses. And that's why I came now. I am the one that has come as the captain of the host of the Lord. Which means then, we have to be dependent. Remember what Jesus said? Without me, you can do nothing. What have you learned there? Characteristics the Lord is looking for in your life and in my life. As we undergo in the training that he gives us. Number one, consecration. Number two, prompt obedience. Number three, courage. Number four, willingness to sacrifice. It will demand sacrifice. Number four is submission. Number, number six is persistence. Although things were going up and going down, yet he persisted till the very end. And then dependence upon the Lord and upon his human leader. In verse 12, but Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and all stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited, defeated Amalek, and defeated his people with the edge 
of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. That last part that I read to you now. What did you see of that? God told Moses, not Joshua, write this in a book. That this is the first battle. And yet the war is not ended. And therefore you write it, you rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Because I will continually wage war against the Amalekites. A lesson we learn. God does not fully speak to somebody under training. He might tell you a little, but the little he tells you, he might even tell you through your leader. And even as he was telling Joshua, he didn't tell him, you will be the final leader. You will be fighting the battles. And you are going, still going to be involved in the wars concerning Amalek and the Canaanites. He just said, write it down. There will be continual war. Rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Let's take all these lessons to heart so that we do not jump ahead of God. And we're not too much in a hurry. We want to do it now. When the Lord is saying that's your first assignment, that's the assignment you have while you are being trained on the job. We're looking at this point number one, which is consecration and submission during training. We now come to Numbers chapter 14. In Numbers chapter 14, the situation here is that in chapter 13, they had gone to spy out the land. And when they came back, ten of the spies gave an evil report. And he said, we be not able to go up. And then we find that they were even going to choose a captain. And as they were going to choose a captain, what did they want to do? They wanted to return unto Egypt. That you find in Numbers 14 verse 4, verse 5. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of, the children of Israel. You find what Moses and Aaron did. They fell down upon their faces. They were very, very much sad because of the attitude and the decision of the children of Israel. Verse 6, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Stop there for a moment. We're, we're following through the life of Joshua under training. While Moses fell down, then he rent his clothes. Can you see that his head was not only what was being trained, his heart was being trained, his feeling was being trained, his emotion was being trained. You see training, when you go to the seminary, the seminary will train your head. But the training that God wants to give us trains our heart as well. When something is bad, when there is, when there is a backsliding, and when the people of God, when they want to go back to the world, a person under training that is going to be used mightily of God, he will feel it to the very marrow of his bone. That if a Moses is there and is falling upon his face, he Joshua that is being trained, you'll find him because of the sorrow of seeing that the children of Israel are going back, will be tearing his clothes and rending his clothes as if he's mourning. And then in verse 7, And they spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through, to such it, is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land, and give it us a, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is uh, the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Here we find faith in God. Are you being trained for service? Are you on the job, but you are still undergoing training? You need to develop your faith. Because without faith, we will not be able to do much. You see, it's courage with a doubt of a Caleb coming up again. And then you will see here that there was uh, uh, that fear of God in him. And his heart was fixed on the promised land. Therefore, we understand as we are undergoing training from the hand of the Holy Ghost, 
There will be courage, we mentioned that before. There will be faith in God. There will be a heart that is fixed on the promised land. There will be the steadfastness in standing with God. Even though you may have to cast your lot with the minority against a violent, aggressive majority. Don't you see that? The majority of the children of Israel, they were for going back to the land of Canaan. But this young man that is undergoing training, he cast a slot with Caleb, with Aaron, and with Moses, the minority against a violent, aggressive majority. And eventually God even testified of him, as well as of Caleb, that they followed him fully. But then you look at um, chapter 32. Sorry, chapter in chapter 13 now that I want to refer to. I've read it before. I just refer to it now. When the, 12, the, when the 12 people were chosen to spy out the land. You will find that at this time. They didn't choose Joshua to lead the team. He was just part of the team. And the 12 were spoken to. And they said go to the land of Canaan. And spy out the land. And bring back reports. So that we will know whether the land is as the Lord as told us. But you know, when Joshua went with them, he never demonstrated any attitude of pride or, spirit or superiority. There was that humility within him. And you never heard his voice, even when they came back all the twelve, when the ten people spoke, you never heard about him. He was willing to be swallowed up in the team. He wasn't all, he knew that he wasn't, you know, the leader at that time. And when working with a team, you know, there are people that cannot be quiet. They always see themselves as the people that are leading the team. And if you give them any part in the team, and you are not giving them a leading role at that time, they become all ruffled, all unhappy. Why is it? I've been leading before. They put me now in the team, and they are not making me to lead the team. My brother will undergo in training. And you need to demonstrate that you can work quietly in the team without any show of pride and without any show of superiority. We've seen quite a lot in the life of Joshua as he was undergoing training. We go to point number two now. Companionship and spirituality of the trainee. Companionship and the spirituality of the trainee. While Joshua was still under training, you find that he was a very close companion of Moses. And you also see the demonstration of his spirituality. Exodus, we're back in Exodus. Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. Now you need to pay attention. The reason I'm saying that is because this part of scripture I'm going to read to you now, most Bible students, they do not know this about Joshua. They do not know what we're going to talk about now. And then they know about how Moses went to the mount. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. But they never knew the part of Joshua in that thing uh, that uh, Moses did. Exodus chapter 24 verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee the tables of stone, and a law, and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister, Joshua. You see that? Moses rose up, and his minister, Joshua. Uh, don't you notice something there? Even situations where Aaron may not be so near. Even situations where oh may not be very near. Even when you don't have the mention of Caleb, you will find Joshua always around. Every opportunity he had. Do you see that that's an important thing in training? That, and that's why Jesus Christ chose the twelve, that they might be with him. After they had been with him, in companionship, that he might send them out, delegating some of the work unto them. Then it says, it's his minister. That is, he was serving him. He was ministering to him. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, tarry ye here. For us, that means for us, that is for me and for Joshua. 
He told the elders to tarry here. We are going to the mount until we come again unto you. That means then, all that time that Moses was away for 40 days and 40 nights, Joshua was away as well. Although he might not have gone to the very top of the mountain, he was somewhere in between. He was not in the valley. He was not with the elders. Neither was he with Aaron in the camp. He was very near uh, Aaron. He was very near Moses. And behold, Aaron and all are with you. If any man have any matters to do, uh, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And then it says, And the glory of the Lord abode upon the mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days, and seven, the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire. You understand? It was a fearful sight. It was a terrifying sight. And yet, Moses had gone up to some level with uh, Joshua. And Joshua will not uh, suppress them. He will not, uh, you know, turn back. He will not forsake Moses and say, This is fearful. And I cannot stand uh, this. And then it says, In the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the, of the cloud. And he got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. What do you learn from that? Joshua was with him. He may not be directly with him, and while God was talking with him, he was somewhere in that mountain. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he was far away there. Why are we mentioning that? For you to understand, it wasn't Moses alone that fasted for the 40 days and 40 nights. Even Joshua, he too was fasting for the 40 days and 40 nights. And he was alone. Alone, but not lonely. As part of our training. Alone, but not lonely. Do you know there are people that cannot be alone for one hour to pray on their own? They want, to, they want to be in the company of other people every time. They cannot spend time alone with the Lord. But we learn about Joshua and his training. He could be alone without being lonely. But as we look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. There's something significant here. As we read about that experience of Moses and Joshua when they went to the mount. Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 18. There in verse 18, it says, For ye are not come unto the mount that may be touched, that burnt with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken unto them anymore. We're reading about what happened at the time of Moses when he went to the mount. When those people heard the sound of the trumpet and they heard the booming voice like mighty waters. And when they saw the blackness and the darkness and the glory and the fire, they said, Moses, you go and hear. Don't let the Lord speak to us directly. And yet, uh, uh, Joshua was not afraid. Joshua still went to the Lord. When the majority of the people were saying, we cannot hear this. This is too much. Joshua went along with Moses. Are you under training? Do you realize then that what the congregation may not be able to stand and they will say this is terrifying. This is too much. If your training will not be deficient, you will be able to follow the Lord no matter how hard. Verse 20. And for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast uh, touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. In verse 21, significant verse. And so terrible was the sight that Moses, even Moses, Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. And yet, even what made Moses to fear and quake, Joshua saw that, Joshua knew that, that was a terrifying situation, but then he said, this Moses is my master, I am his minister. Although the situation is terrifying, I have no choice, I have to move on with him. How do we know that he was uh, with him all those 40 days and 40 nights? Come back to the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus 
chapter 32. We're reading from verse 15. Exodus chapter 32, from verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of uh, testimony were in his hand. And the tables were written on both sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God graving upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. Well, you learn a lot you learn here, but we don't have the time to expatiate too much. But something is very, very definite. He didn't know they were worshipping the golden calf. He didn't know that the children of Israel had backslidden. Well, that tells us something. Moses knew. Because God had told Moses, that your people that you brought out of the land of Egypt, they have come back so soon. Leave me alone so that my anger will wax hot against them. Something is very clear here. Moses knew more than Joshua. God has spoken something to Moses which he didn't tell Joshua. Isn't that a lesson in leadership? It is not everything a leader knows that he will tell the trainees. It is not everything Moses knew that he told Joshua. Not only that, as uh, now he said, this is a noise of war. Don't you get something there? He started fighting the Amalekites. Anytime he heard noise, to him it's like the assignment has come again. This is a noise of war. What are we doing here? Let's rush into the camp. It's like a war is going on. A man that was getting ready. And he was ready every time. It's like, uh, you know, you're undergoing training. And you have been given chance to preach here and preach there. Anytime the opportunity is there. You are so excited. Even when the opportunity is not there. And you think there's a resemblance of the opportunity. You're almost ready to jump at it. But we learned something here. He was ignorant of what was going on in the camp. And uh, that means that he was not with them all the 40 days and the 40 nights. And then we're told in that same, uh, in that same chapter, verse 18, and he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. You know what they were singing? They were in their idolatrous worship because they have become naked. What we learn here? We learn here that as we're in training, there is something very important in our lives. There must be communion and supplication. What was Joshua doing? By the side of the mountain. All those 40 days and 40 nights, communion with God. Supplication unto God. Our training will be defective. If private praying or secret communion with God is missing, and then you understand that the 40 days when Joshua was waiting, he didn't know that Joshua, that Moses will take all the 40 days and 40 nights. Moses himself did not know he will take all to the 40 days and 40 nights. He waited there patiently, contrast him with Aaron. Aaron was with all. He had a companion. Aaron was with the children of Israel. He, had, he was with the multitude. And then the children of Israel said, We don't know what has happened to Moses. Up make us gods that will go before us. As for this Moses, we do not know what has become of him. But as they were impatient in the camp, uh, this Joshua remained patient. If we are going to fulfill the ministry, we must then understand that we are to be patient. Now, when he came back from the mountain, Moses had to do something. Look at Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, reading from verse 7. In Exodus 33, verse 7, And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone we sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without outside the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out 
unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at the tent door and looked at her, at her Moses that is they were looking at him as he was going until he was gone into the tabernacle and it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in a strange door they were far away they couldn't get near and and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend listen to this now and he turned again into the camp but a servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. Do you see the, his prayerfulness there? Do you see his communion there? Do you see that where you find him, you always find something spiritual. When you find him, you always find that he was very close to the Lord and he wanted to remain as close to the Lord as he could be. As we undergo in our training, we need to understand it must be our desire to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. This is where Joshua got spiritual strength. This is where Joshua got his vision and zeal for the Lord. This is where he got his conviction for divine call. What a training Joshua had. If we are going to have the same thing. You know, this is why seminaries are failing. Because they train the mind, they train the intellect, and they train the head. But the spiritual life, many times, they do not train. We come to point number three. The commission and the charge of the train. The commission and the charge of the train. You will see that as we've been referring to this, Joshua. Joshua had been called by two titles. Number one, he was Moses' minister. Number two, he was a servant of Moses. Look at Exodus. Let's go back to Exodus. Just to understand how they referred to this um, Joshua. Exodus chapter 24 verse 13. Exodus chapter 24 verse 13. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua. And then in Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11, verse 28. Numbers 11, verse 28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses. So, for many years, while he was still undergoing God's training, he was referred to as just Moses' minister as just the servant of Moses. But now, his training was now coming to an end. And he was about to be commissioned so that he will have the charge of leading the children of Israel into the promised land. Numbers chapter 27, the commission, and then the charge. Numbers chapter 27. In Numbers 27, verse 15. Numbers 27 from verse 15. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, search a man over the congregation. Moses, why are you praying like this? Didn't you know that Joshua will take over? Didn't you know that you are told to write down from the very first time, rehearse it in the ears of Joshua? Oh, he says, yes, I knew that. But there is no eternal security, either in salvation or in service. No eternal security, either in salvation or in service. If you are saved, and then you are supposed to get to the promised land, and you are supposed to get to heaven, but you do something that disqualifies you, you will find the, it, the security is conditional. Not in eternal security, conditional security. If you are called into service, and the Lord wanted to do great exploits with your life. If you do something wrong, you will understand that service, that commission is not an eternally secured thing reserved for you. It's a conditional thing. That's why I was praying like that. And then it says in verse 17, which shall go, which may go before them, and which may go in uh, before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep, which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. That's his commission now. Oh, what a wonderful thing. As you look at the life of Joshua, before you get into the book of Joshua, 
you will find that many, many people arose. You will find, for example, the mixed multitude. It was never part of them. You will find that there was Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. You will find it wasn't one of them. You will find there were 250 people that rose up, men of renown, that said Moses had killed the people of God. It was none of them. You will find that the son of, uh, of uh, Aaron offering strange fire. He was not a party to it. You will find he distinguished himself. He was under training. God was preparing him for something very, very important, something of great consequence. And then the Lord said that uh, this uh, Joshua must be commissioned because there's something that he was to do. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid a science upon him. For a moment, please stop. For almost 40 years, Joshua had been with Moses. Oh, this Moses must have been a person that has self-control. He controlled himself. He didn't talk too much to Joshua. Because he didn't know what Joshua will become. Eventually, he knew the plan of the Lord. He knew the Lord wanted to use the young man. But he didn't know because he had seen what Aaron did. He saw what Miriam did. He saw what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did. He saw what all those people did. Because of that, he was very, very quiet. And don't you think, if it was some of us today, you lay hands upon that man immediately. This man is trustworthy. This man is dependable. I need to lay hands upon him because I know he's the one going to lead. He never did that. Very much, uh, you know, self-control. Isn't that what we ought to learn? That you don't promise too much to anybody that is still undergoing training. He is not God's certificate yet. Don't give him the final job. He will do after he has got the certificate. But now he laid hands on him. And when he laid hands on him, it says it's as a result of that he was full of the spirit of wisdom. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now, we learn uh, something here about uh, this uh, Joshua as we summarize about his uh, training. Seven things I just want to uh, tell you, the height and the scope of our life ministry. That is, the ministry you will, go, you will have, really have in life will be limited to the depth and the extent of the training we have received. The scope or the height of our final ministry life ministry will be limited to the depth and to the extent of the training we have received. Look at our man that we're studying today. He who had humbly received instruction. That's number one. Two. He who had faithfully performed his duties without complaint, without murmuring. Three. He who had wholly followed the Lord without joining the ten spies that had brought the evil report. Four, he who had zealously cherished communion with God. And five, he who had sincerely aimed at the glory of God in everything that he said and did. Number six, he who had diligently trod the path of obedience, whether simple or hard. Number seven, he who had stood firm and stood fearless in a day of prevailing unbelief and general apostasy among the children of Israel. At last now, he was ready. To be commissioned for public ministry. I pray you'll be ready. I said you'll be ready. When the time comes and then you have gone through the training and all these characteristics we have learned about uh, Joshua will be in your life and then God will raise you up and he will use you and commission you and charge you. There are some people there, maybe they're in their hundreds, maybe they're in their thousands, who knows, maybe they're in their millions and God will use you to lead them to the promised land in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's tell the Lord... As this man Joshua was prepared and trained, so we want the hand of the Lord to be upon us. There's a time of our training. There's a time of our preparation. We need to be trained. We need to be prepared so that we can be all that God wants us to be. Yield to the training of the Lord. Your life is precious before the Lord. He wants to do something significant with your life. A thousands waiting for you. Maybe millions are waiting for you. To lead them to the promised land. Promise the Lord, I will. I will. I will. Don't join the mixed multitude. 
Don't be part of the team of Korah, Data, and Abiram. Don't join them in raising up a golden calf to worship idol. The hand of the Lord is upon you. He has a great, great plan for your life. Promise the Lord, it will be fulfilled. You are that one.